She's a good girl. Nothing at her. Nothing. Nothing she's doing. She's a good girl. Oh, well, here you are. I want attention to you. Yes, you're a good boy most of the time. Well, some of the time. Yes, nothing to do with you. Nothing to sweet. Ears, he's not so sweet. But he's lets you know he's there. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Okay, you're like the guys at the airport that help the planes muster out, aren't you? You just need some little headphones and some of those shiny reflector things. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, December 3rd. I am here on campus today. We have, I have some grading I need to do, but also we have a follow-up session with the people who did the Teaching Excellence Academy this summer. Uh, this afternoon, I'm not real sure if it's just like a get together or if we're, I don't know, I'm just going. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've got to finish up grading my uh, student presentations or I'm going to work on finishing them up. I don't know if I'll get them all done or not because they take a little bit of time to go through. I had them do voiceover PowerPoint um, and some of them didn't follow the instructions. So they've done it in these different formats. And so it takes a minute, you know, whatever, we'll get through it. Uh, but it takes a minute to get through them all. Um, so I came in a little bit later today. I'm supposed to meet a student in a few minutes. Um, this young woman took my physics three class, my modern physics class, and, um, was not getting a lot of support in the area where she is a major. And so I think I've persuaded her to become a physics major. <laughs> oh, my eye is red. And that eye, it feels like I've, I need to probably take my contact out. It feels like I've gotten something in it and it's might be irritated my cornea a little bit uh but anyway so that's that's attractive <laughs> uh but anyway so um she's gonna meet with me this morning at some point i told her i'd be in my office from like 9 30 till like 12 30 so hopefully she'll come in and see me today uh it's those kind of things that make me really happy um when i hear that that students are interested especially young women interested in majoring in physics um but i've really enjoyed having her in class and i think that you know, she would, she's interested in medical drug development. And I said, well, you know, nuclear medicine and cancer treatment therapies, you could be a physicist and do those things. Cause I have a former student, Jeremy, who um, has a master's degree in medical physics. And now he is a radiation, uh, he's the radiation physicist for a big cancer clinic in Nashville. So, um, yeah, he got to work with proton therapy machines and all this stuff. So, um, anyway, I wanted to, um, just check in with you a little bit. We're going to head and do some grading and meet with a student and see what else we get up to. I'm wearing my overalls or my dungarees today. And then I paired that with, this is one of my CJ Brady, uh, shawls. I can't remember which one this is, but, um, it's not thousand kisses. I don't remember. It's one of C.J. Brady's little one skein wonders. I've talked about it a million times, her stuff a million times. And this is the Yoshi and Lucy uh, Tits Out Collective colorway from 2018. So um, I love this color. And it supported kitty cats. It supported a cat rescue when you bought it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to head inside now and get started. Well, I just got through visiting with, with my student, Andrea, about uh, she decided to change majors to become a physics major. And we were talking a little bit about... Um, classes and projects and stuff like that. And one of the things that I got to talk, thinking about from talking to her was talking about one of the things she's interested in is drug development or medical applications. And one of the things that I suggested that she look at was uh, nuclear medicine. And one of the aspects of nuclear medicine is things like uh, radiation therapy for cancer treatment. And so I thought I would share with you a little bit of information about how uh, that works. The idea behind radiation therapy makes use of something called the Bragg peak for different, um, for different, um, types of radiation particles. Now, when I say radiation, people go, Oh my God, 
Well, radiation just means a particle emanating, a highly energetic particle or light ray emanating from something. It's not necessarily a bad thing, right? In this case, it's a very good thing because we make use of that energy in order to destroy the cancerous cells of the tumor. Um, standard treatment machines use something called photon therapy. And photon therapy is... Um, Photon therapy is also sometimes called external beam therapy, but basically it's really, really concentrated, powerful x-rays. It's no different than the x-rays that they use to take an x-ray of a broken bone, but they're just more highly energetic because there's a range of energies for x-rays. And um, so for, for cancer treatment, you use very energetic x-rays and they're concentrated in a beam. Uh, and the idea is they will deposit their energy at the location of the tumor and destroy the cells, right? And then they can't replicate, the destroyed cells can no longer replicate. So basically you're cooking it kind of in a way. Um, the treatment, the current um, treatments are, you, like I say, use x-rays or sometimes they use electrons and that has to do with their Bragg peaks. Now, one of the newer, more innovative cancer treatments uses proton therapy and proton therapy I actually have a former student, JJ, who is a medical physicist and he now works at a cancer treatment facility in Nashville. But when he was doing his graduate research, he was working on proton therapy machines. And the advantage of the proton therapy is the, the Bragg peak size. So what is a Bragg peak? I'll put a picture right here. If you look at this picture, what you see are three lines. The first one, the, the, the hot pink sort of colored line, is the Bragg peak for photons, and that means the x-rays. What you'll see when you look at that is it's the, 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 the horizontal scale is the um, depth into the tissue. The vertical scale is the percentage of energy release, okay? So if you look at that, the, pro, the photon beam, the sort of pinky purple line, is fairly close to the surface, and then it tails off so what that means is most of your energy is deposited near the surface, which is fine if that's where your tumor is, but a lot of tumors are deeper into the skin, okay, or deeper into the body. So if you'll notice that horizontal scale is in centimeters. So if you're trying to treat tumors that are close to the surface, really super effective, great. But if you're trying to treat deeper tumors, say um, lung cancer or bladder cancer or colon cancer or something that's further down into the body, yes, you still get some energy and that's what they're making use of in most treatment machines, but the tail of that peak is not as strong as the 100% mark, so you're not as effective in treating the tumor. The other two uh, pictures are uh, the proton beams. There's the modified proton beam and the native proton beam. You want the, the modified proton beam is actually what is used in treatment, and that's they use techniques to distribute the energy a little bit wider, but notice the depth is greater. The depth is greater on the proton beam. So what that means is the healthy tissue that's above the tumor is not getting all the energy deposited in it like it is with the x-ray beam, so you're not damaging that tissue in order to treat what's underneath it. You're getting more of the energy deposited actually at the depth that you want the tumor to be at. And you can adjust this depth based on the energy of these protons a little bit, um, but it's a much more targeted treatment, so it's a lot more effective. Unfortunately, proton therapy is still new enough that there's not that many machines around because they're incredibly expensive. A lot of the big cancer centers will have these proton therapy machines, but because they're so prohibitively expensive, it's not like you can go to your, you know, your hospital in the next town and get it, unless you happen to live close to one of these big areas. Uh, it is becoming more important or more prevalent because as any technology, the longer it's around, the less expensive it becomes. So instead of tens of millions of dollars, now they're a few million dollars. <laughs> I know that still sounds like a lot. Um, but, you know, because it is so targeted, they can use this. Now, another thing that they can do to sort of treat uh, if, if that depth is too deep for the Bragg peak, you can pull it up by actually putting a mask or a shield of, of material that mimics tish, living tissue, and then it kind of fakes the proton beam out and has it just deposit its energy closer to the surface tumor. 
Electron beams are often used for like salivary gland tumors and stuff because they have a Bragg peak that's right underneath the skin, basically. Um, but, you know, Bragg peak is, is the information about where that energy is deposited. So when you look at this picture, that's telling you where that particular type of energy is depositing most of its energy load. So protons are the sort of the new, um, much more effective. And I think about how much cancer treatment has evolved since you know, my great grandmother, when I was like five, um, had to go for what we called cobalt treatments. And um, the cobalt treatments were uh, where they would use a native overview, a native isotope of cobalt. So let me look that up really quick. Hang on just a sec. So I looked up cobalt machines. Cobalt used a native isotope of cobalt-60, which was a natural producer of gamma rays, which is another form of photon therapy or external beam therapy. Um, basically, they just had some cobalt <laughs> sitting in this thing. They opened the little window, the gamma rays came out and hit the tumor or hit the person to treat the tumor. Um, X-rays are produced in a different mechanism called an linear accelerator. Um, basically what you do to produce x-rays is you get electrons moving really, 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 really fast, and then you slam them into a target of some kind, usually tungsten. And when the electrons come to a screeching halt, they dump a lot of energy out. It's called bremsstrahlung radiation, which stands for breaking radiation, or means breaking radiation. I believe it's German. But the bremsstrahlung radiation is what creates x-rays, period. But it's the amount of energy that is deposited that depends on the type of x-ray so you get the electrons with different amounts of energy when they hit that target they come to this screeching halt and and dump this energy so they're more energetic and more effective than the cobalt treatments because basically you just have a chunk of cobalt the other thing with cobalt treatments is when you're done with the cobalt machine what do you do with the cobalt 60. <laughs> it's like well we can't just put it in the trash because it's radioactive um, but anyway, so my grandma had cobalt treatments back in like, this would have been the early 70s. Um, so we've come a long way. <laughs> anyway, so that's your little science snippet for today. So another way Bremster Lung is formed, because I want to be complete on this, it doesn't have to be stopped. It can be, it's not really a collision as such. A lot of times what will happen is the electrons will kind of slingshot around the nucleus of an atom. Um, it's called an elastic collision, and so I'm going to put a picture in here that shows that that change of direction because acceleration or, or I hate the word deceleration, negative acceleration. Accelerations can happen from speeding up or slowing down or changing direction, and so we're taking advantage of the change in the direction of the electron here. So um, that's where you can get Brunstrahlung too. So there will be a quiz later. <laughs> I'm headed over to the faculty uh, excellence reception, get together, reunion, whatever we're calling it. But it's a really beautiful day here today. These trees are gorgeous here on campus. Um, they have a really beautiful campus. Our grounds people take really good care of it. We've got some beautiful mature trees too. Um, but anyway, so I'm headed over to this reunion thing. I've been working on grading uh, presentations. I had them do voiceovers, like I said, on their PowerPoint. Some of them have been really, really great. Some of them submitted them in Keynote, which I have a PC, and that's an Apple product. So I'm going to have to wait till I can get to one of the classrooms with an Apple computer to be able to look at those. Um, but anyway, so we're headed out to the Faculty Excellence Reception. We got finished with the, uh, the reunion and we talked about some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't this semester. And um, so I'm headed to the house. Our department administrative assistant subscribes to HelloFresh and apparently she got an extra box somehow or another this month. So she brought in the meals and gave everybody one. So I've got the Thai chicken curry <laughs> to try out. 
to see how I like it. Um, so I'll have that at some point this weekend, I think. Yeah, so it was a good. It was good to see everybody from the summer and talk about things and kind of think about what worked and what didn't and how we want to move forward in the spring and what we're going to keep and what we're going to try differently. So that was good. Always enjoy seeing that group of people. That that group of people being involved with Seagull has been a real a real lifesaver and a real spirit saver for me um, on campus. I have to say, it really has helped me be a better instructor. So. I'll catch up with y'all when I get back. I thought I'd share a couple more holiday cards I got. This is from my friend Carol, who um, you've seen, heard me talk about plenty of times before. So it's a really pretty one. And then this is from Christy in Alaska, Christy Knits. And uh, I love this card because it's Krampus. <laughs> I love Krampus. That is definitely going to get cut out and made into an ornament for my tree, just so you know. So anyway, headed out to bottle feed the calf. Well, I've got calf drool on me there. I got her stand up for a little bit longer, but I'm getting a little concerned because she just feels like she's losing heart. And she's got to have heart. She's got to try. I can't do everything. So hopefully she'll perk up. But we'll see. So <laughs> we're doing everything we can for her. So we'll see. we'll see. I got her. She did stand up a little bit longer today. So that's something. But I would like to see her stand on her own without me having to hold her up. But we're going to keep feeding her. Maybe we'll get there. So today's uh, Ninja Chicken's Herbal Hot Chocolate comes with an extra, but today's is Orange Delight. And that makes me excited because I love orange flavor. I love oranges. I love orange flavored candy. Uh, and, it, and here's the extra. So let's see what this is. It feels like maybe a bar of soap. Ooh, yes. It's chocolate doesn't judge me hot chocolate soap how awesome is this so it's handmade by earthly good goods it's got colombian cocoa shea butter cocoa butter oat milk olive oil coconut oil sunflower oil castor oil kale and clay and love yes it looks like it's got little marshmallows in the top of it that's sweet i love that Chocolate doesn't judge me. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So let's see what today's stitchy box is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So we'll see here. Oh, nice. Okay, it's curved scissors. I love using curved scissors. It makes snipping those threads so much easier. Oh, I've been wanting some of these. So these are the scissors that have a slight curve to them so you can get under the threads if you need to. Oh, this is exciting. Yes, very cool. All right. Well, I think I'm going to end it here today. I've got to go to campus tomorrow because I'm doing a helping with the professional development workshop for some K-12 teachers because in 2024, in April of 2024, we're going to have a full solar eclipse come right across, diagonally across Arkansas. My farm is pretty darn close to the midline of the totality strip of the eclipse so i'm super excited about that um so we're doing some professional development uh we got a grant or i said we will slice one of my cards Saturday night into Sunday. They're predicting like an inch and a half of rain in 36 hours. So I need to make sure she's got, she's out of the wet because I don't want her getting wet and getting cold. Um, but anyway, so hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed for her. We'll keep feeding her and hopefully she'll perk up. But anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.